What up, what up, Winbush here. And this has been requested by a lot of people. So I want to show you the steps that I use whenever I'm building out 3D maps for TV shows, when I just have to do like an aerial view looking directly down. So I use Real Creator and bring it all into Unreal Engine. And I'm going to show you the exact steps on how we can manually build everything out from scratch when we're bringing everything over. So inside of Real Creator, I'm using 2024 for this version. But as you can see, we have a terrain that's already built out and we're going to bring this over to Unreal. So in order to do that, over on my right hand side, we have export settings. So I'm going to use a custom export folder. I'm going to turn this on and right here, I'm going to click on the three dots. So now with my folder set up, I'm going to come over here to export again. And there's a plus symbol right to the right of it. I'm going to left click on this and that's going to bring this export folder into our section here. So I'm going to click on this plus button right here. And the first one I want to select is the height map. Now I'm going to get this all set up in a minute, but let me first add in a color map. So I'm going to click on plus again, click on color map, click on a plus again, because I want to bring in a roughness. And also I want to bring in a normal map, but you do have an option for metalness as well, but we're not going to need that for this one, but we are going to use the ambient occlusion map. So I'm going to left click on this and that should be everything that we need. So we could just start at the top and work our way down. So we have our ambient occlusion map. So what I'm going to do is come over to format. I'm going to leave it as a PNG, but everything you see in here, I'm going to do it at 16 bit and then I'm going to leave it at default compression. Now, the one thing I am going to change is right here where it says load preset. I'm going to left click on this and I'm just going to click on Unreal and it's just going to change out the naming convention and everything. And then if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, now this is where we're going to have our export button. So I'm going to left click on this and you might notice right here, it's showing that our export is 4096 by 4096. That's 4K. So that's matching our terrain data right here. So I'm going to do it again for the normal map. Make it 16 bit, load preset, Unreal. And I'm just going to do this for the rest of them as well. So now when we get the height map, there are some things that we're going to want to change out. So you'll see over here on format, it says format for raw. What I like to do is make it a PNG. It has some issues whenever I did it raw before, but even though Unreal can take raw, I'd still put it as a PNG. And I'm just going to make this one 16 bit as well and then load preset. I'm going to put it as Unreal Engine. Then I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the bottom where it says Game Engine instead of Unity. I'm going to click on Unreal. And the nice thing you notice is when I clicked on Unreal right here on our Z scale, it's going to show us exactly what we need to put in. So once you're happy with your settings, again, we're going to click on Export and wait for this to export out. So once we have everything exported out, this is exactly what it's going to look like as you see inside of Windows Explorer. But inside of Unreal Engine, this is where we're going to get our terrain set up and our material. So down here, instead of my content browser, I'm going to right click and I'm going to come up here to material and I could just name this one landscape. And before I double click on this, I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer and I'm just going to left click and drag and I'm going to select everything here and I'm going to bring it into my content browser. And always hit save because it's always good to save. And then we're going to come down here to where it says landscape and I'm going to double click on this. Now with my material graph open, I'm going to do this one at a time. So I'm going to come back down here into my content browser and I'm going to start with my color map. I'm going to left click, drag this up here and I'm going to take this RGB and I'm going to put this as the base color. So I'm going to left click and connect it there. And then the next one down, we have roughness. So I'm going to take my roughness map, left click, drag it into my material graph and I'm going to connect this RGB to the roughness pass. Now the next one we have is our normal map. Same thing, drag this into here, take the RGB, put it into my normal pass. And last but not least, I'm going to take ambient occlusion. I'm going to bring that into here as well. And then I'm going to put this under ambient occlusion. Now, if we were to take this material as is, when we dropped it onto our landscape, it's going to tile it extensively, but there is a node that I found that's going to help us fix that. So inside of our material graph, we're going to right click and then we're going to type in landscape. And we want to use this one right here. This is landscape layers chords. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to connect it to the UV node of all my different materials here. And right here under my details panel, where we see mapping scale, we do know that our map is 4K. So we're going to make this 4096 to match our terrain. So I'm just going to type in 4096 here, hit enter. And then we're going to come up here to the top left and I'm just going to save it. So it was easy as that. It was pretty self-explanatory except for that one landscape node. But once we're happy with it, we can exit this out. And now inside of our selection mode, we're going to left click and we're going to come down here to where I have landscape. So now with this menu open up, we're going to click on import from file and where it says height map file, I'm going to left click on this and I'm going to look for my height map that I exported out, which is right here. And I'm going to click on open. Now it's going to ask me if I wanted to use a tile image. I typically hit no. And now we can start seeing that we have a wireframe of our terrain inside of our viewport here. But let's go back to real creator, right? Because this part's important. We can see right there inside the attributes, it says 30.96. So that's exactly what we want to type out whenever we're inside of Unreal Engine. 
So right here under scale, where we have our blue, this is gonna be our Z. So we're gonna type in 30.96, or you could do 31 if you want, just to play as an even number. Hit enter. And then down here, I'm gonna hit fit the data. And the last thing where it says material, right here, instead of none, I'm gonna take that material landscape that I just made, click and drag it into here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on import. So now let's go above our viewport here, or our landscape, sorry. And you can see now, we have our terrain that was from World Creator brought into Unreal Engine. But you might notice that it might look a little bit washed out. And so we can easily fix that by going back into our landscape material. So back inside of our material graph, I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. And then I'm gonna right click here and open. And I'm just gonna type in power. And then I'm gonna left click on this. And now that's gonna bring in a power node. So I'm gonna take the RGB, bring it into the base. Let me actually scroll in here so we can see it a little bit better. And then I'm gonna take this connector node and put it into my base. You can already see that it started getting a little bit darker, but now with our power node selected, if we come over here into our details panel, where it says exponent, instead of two, we wanna put it on 2.2 by default. And we're gonna click on save just to see the results that we get. So now you can see it's a little bit darker. Maybe we can up it a little bit more. So let me actually try three, hit save. And there we go. So now we're a little bit more closer to what we had inside of World Creator. And also we do have like exponential height fog and everything turned on. So that's why it's a little bit more washed out, but it's looking a lot closer to what we had inside of World Creator. And that's basically how I set it up. And that's gonna be it. Because if you're doing an aerial map, you're looking directly down at the earth. And so the materials are really gonna hold up. And this looks really great from an aerial perspective, but you might notice whenever you come down to like a POV and you're at a ground level, the materials aren't gonna hold up. So if you wanna do something that's going to be a little bit more finite check out my last video where i can show you how we can bring everything over using the bridge plugin and that's going to give you a lot more flexibility with your materials so if you did find this helpful make sure you leave me a comment down below i'm going to be doing a lot more world building tutorials because y'all seem to like them but until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i'll see you soon take care